This is the Hover Air X1, or as I like to call it, the flying cameraman for those who don't have a lot of friends, like me. It's simply amazing. I know I'm slow to the party with this thing. I've always wanted to test it. So there's not many things that get me excited anymore, but this thing is absolutely fantastic. Just look how it folds up. This genuinely does fit in your pocket. I got a deal for you. Use the code HOLIDAY20 to get $20 off this camera. And thank you to Hover for sending me this. Let's get on with the video. All you need to do is hold the power button for a few seconds. The gimbal will calibrate. There's a second button on the device to change your mode. Current mode. Follow. Continue. Follow. At this stage, it's ready to take off. Notice even while I'm trying to film it, it's trying to track me. It's a very nice little tool. When you're done, just hold your hand out and the hover will land in your hand. The Hover Air uses VIO, Visual Inertia Odometry, to locate itself based on the image it's seen. Also, a laser altitude determination helps locate itself so you don't need a GPS. Now this thing only weighs 125 grams and I've actually crashed it quite a few times. I'll show you one of my big crashes shortly. This thing's not going to replace your Mavic Pro series of drones or any of that for image quality, but what this thing does so well and what none of those DJI drones can do is tracking. Phenomenal at tracking and the built-in functions actually do work. As something that I would like reach to put into my camera bag if I was going on a little walk or something, I'd probably take this thing and the DJI Pocket 3. Each battery on the Hover Air will last roughly 11 minutes, so it's advisable to get two. So how easy is this thing to crash? Well, for the most part it kept up with me really well. I took it to the forest. Every now and then, if you're going on a really sharp corner, it'll tend to overshoot that corner. In this case, it hit a branch. However, after hitting this branch, I just launched it again, and there were no issues. It just carried on. Now, the Hover Air X1 also has five different built-in modes. I'm going to show you all of those modes individually. It's also got an app that you can customize all those different modes while you're using it. I'm going to take you through the app as well. Now you can record sound using your mobile phone. I'm connected to a lav mic and this camera will actually remove the background noise. I mean, you can barely hear any background noise. It's got some proprietary software noise reduction that gets rid of this horrible B noise. And it's actually not that loud generally. It's quieter than, for example, a Mavic 3 Pro, I'd say. And once you stop, it comes back to you, so it knows the dolly shot is over. Good boy. Hover mode is actually pretty cool. It kind of just tracks you. You put it in the air and it just sits in one location and tracks you when target tracking is set to on. This is much like a DJI Pocket 3, except it's flying in the air. And I will say this, even though the Pocket 3 has very good tracking, this thing puts it to shame in my opinion. And by the way, it was very windy that day. Pretty damn good. This is follow mode. Follow mode is my favorite mode because you can easily incorporate it into your videos and it just gives you a nice epic shot of you walking to a location for example. You could use this for hikes. It's got so many various situations that this thing's useful for. And it's not as loud as you might think. So that's the one positive. When you're done, all you need to do is stop walking and in theory the drone should just come to you Although in this case it actually lowered itself, which I found really impressive. Hold your hand out. Orbit mode is very useful on this particular drone. Let me show you what it does. It'll obviously do an orbit around you. And it's actually pretty cool, especially if you're at a location. I'll show you some examples. Let's... Now the drone flies a couple meters away from you and does the shot. That is pretty tight. Oh my gosh, just enough space. Don't hit those branches, my friend. Do not hit those branches, just enough space. Now it should come back to you. Just look at that. Now you're not supposed to fly this drone over water or in very windy conditions, although on this day it was quite windy and it seemed to do a pretty darn good job. The next mode is bird's eye view. That'll go straight up and you can actually set the height, but I'm going to show you that just now. 
It gets a nice perspective if you want to show from a top-down view of what you're at, or maybe you're at like a mountain or a location or something like that. Let me show you bird's eye. It's pretty straightforward. Again, you just choose the mode and push the button. And there she goes. Now I know your Mavic 3 can do this, but this drone does not require a controller, it easily fits in your backpack, and it's just much more convenient. And while the image quality is not going to be as good as a Mavic 3, it's actually really usable footage at 2.7K. Resist the urge to look up. Whoa, you mother. <laughs> That's pretty damn cool, you got to admit. The next mode is zoom out. Maybe you've got a nice location in the background and you just want to get a zoom out shot. It's simple. It's one of the modes on the actual dial. You just push the button again, hold Nine it out. Meters. Nine zoom meter, out. zoom out. One of my favorite modes, and this could easily be used at the start or end of your videos, just to show your viewers where you are and gives them a nice perspective. It exposes those clouds really well in the background as well. And it easily comes back to you and lands back in your hand. Let's be honest, this is about as a cinematic shot you've ever seen on this channel. Yes, this is a very good little tool, I must say. For everyday use, simply fantastic. How well will this thing do following me in a tricky environment? Let's have a look. This is due to lack of weeding. There's a lot of weeds and spider webs back here. Damn it! Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Whoa, spider webs. Australia sucks. Ah. Amazingly, it's doing pretty well. Ah. It's done pretty well. It got to these branches, and luckily, it's protected on, by those little rotor blade Disclaimer, guards. Do not fly the Hover Air X1 in this kind of environment with tons of branches. It eventually got stuck, but that was quite a tricky and tight environment taking that. Taking the little hover through there, I can't imagine a Mavic 3 drone getting through there. It'll just stop optical detector, but this thing does give it a bash, which is quite impressive. Now, you don't need the app to fly this thing, but the app is useful because you can actually customize the settings and you can actually control this thing manually with the app. We switch the device on and you can click this like hover settings on the top and you'll notice there's some options for hover. You can change the video mode. You can change the duration. You can set tracking target on or off, vertical modes, and your frame rates. That one doesn't have that many settings. Zoom out, for example, you can set the distance all the way up to 9 meters, 6 meters, 3, or even as the short 1.5 meters away. That's the distance it goes actually flying away from you. So in the follow mode, for example, you could change the distance to close or standard, which is a little bit further away, and far, which would be a lot further away, so it tracks you from further away. You can also set the altitude to high, a flatter shot, which is kind of like at your shoulders. You could do a low shot, which kind of looks up at you. I guess the gimbal head just pans up slightly. The orbit mode, also customizable. You can see the radius can be set all the way up to six meters if you want a wider shot of yourself in whatever location you're in. The angle, you can actually do 100, 180 degrees or 90 degrees, which is pretty useful. Altitude again, a riser shot, a flat shot, or a lower one meter shot. And all these modes have a vertical mode, which allows you to actually set for Instagram. That's still kind of in like beta testing at the moment, but you can do it. It'll give you like horizontal video, I guess, for Instagram or TikTok or whatever you want to do. You can see your firmware update and there's your sound recording settings. The sound will record directly through your mobile phone or you can use a lav mic to actually record sound. So there's your sound recording settings. The custom modes are also there. Custom mode, currently you can switch between two different modes, snapshot or dolly track. When you're in dolly track, you can set the distance, close, standard or far. It's very useful again, so you can set the camera from further away, show more of your background. On a warm sunny morning, the how-to guy walked. Step by step towards a sniper's scope. For out of the sky, on that very date, a bullet came to seal his fate. The bullets hit the lung and spleen, he was done. The how-to guy fell beneath the hot sun. Unbeknownst to him, his final hour it seemed at last, his luck had run dry. His lifeless form, the end of the play. What viewers see, no man could survive. But what is this? Could he still be alive? Sitting up straight, a defiance untold. 
This last part is crazy, but I tell you today, he simply got up and walked away. <laughs>